On January 2nd, 2015, the long-standing world record for TOG was smashed when Kenneth Westerfeld of College Point, New York, landed a 28.8-pound blackfish, appropriately named TOGzilla. The Fisherman Magazine sat down with Ken to hear the whole story in his words. This is the conclusion to the three-part series. So uh, the fish itself, uh, I think it's going to be uh, a world record on several levels once uh, IGFA does all their confirmation. Uh, the length of the fish is 35 inches, and I don't think there's ever been a blackfish of that length recorded. So I think it's going to be a, a length record. It's going to be a, an all-tackle record. The weight was recorded as uh, 28.8 pounds or 28 pounds, 13 ounces. Um, when I first had it on the certified scale, I have a picture where it actually says 29 pounds flat. And um, when we put it on my digital scale on the boat, the fish bottomed out to uh, spring scales, 25 pound spring scales, one after the other on the boat. One was Kane's and one belonged to uh, Captain Matt from Cos Cobb Charters. He was, he was there on the charter with us. Uh, so we put the fish on their spring scales and bottomed out the 25 pound scales and I always travel with the digital scale. So uh, I announced that I had one and I took it out and they put the fish on there and when you're on a boat, the digital, uh, you know, from the rocking of the boat, there's always a slight rocking. Uh, the scale tends to bounce back and forth. It never rests flat on a number. So it was, it was bouncing back and forth from 28 pounds to 31 pounds on the boat. And we kind of knew that the old world record was 25 and a hair, maybe. Um, caught in New Jersey in 1998 and um, we pretty much knew at that point you know I mean even if uh, even if the fish dried out even if it weighed in on the certified scale at the lower end of that spectrum I still probably had a minimum 27 pound fish there on the deck so we pretty much knew it was a world record and a Maryland state record within minutes and, um, you know, it was a very exciting moment. Uh, back at the Sunset Marina during the weigh-in, you know, uh, the news traveled very fast. Kane put it out on the air on, on, the, uh, on the VHF. And um, some of the uh, local TOG captains happened to hear a conversation so everybody started chiming in and there was a lot of excitement right away. Um, we were met at the Sunset Marina by um, the guy with uh, a, a really nice digital camera. He took the official photos. He took the photos of the fish on the certified tournament scale. Um, and Captain Monty Hawkins himself was there waiting at the marina. Uh, he took the measurements on the fish and um, everything was put down on paper and made official. Um, it was an exciting moment. Uh, y y there were a lot of people there <laughs> and uh, it was pretty cool, you know? I mean, everybody just coming out of the woodwork like that um, just to see this fish. So uh, I knew it was a big deal, you know, I knew it was a big deal right away and uh, my mind just started racing with uh, the potential uh, possibilities and opportunities of what was about to take place. And uh, we spent a while at the marina, you know, with that whole process and uh, it was a long, long day and uh, we were all starving. <laughs> so uh, our next thoughts turned to dinner. Um, but, uh, you know, to cap things off, um, 
you know, it's not it's not just me. It's not all about me and this fish. You know, there's there's a whole lot more to it. Uh, obviously, I could not have caught this fish if Captain Kane Bounds didn't take me to that wreck, and uh, he wasn't such a wonderkind with his book of numbers, and he really is. You know, he's. I mean the. The type of uh, bottom structure that the state offers down there is uh, overwhelmingly fantastic. It's kind of second to none. The state of Maryland and the state of Delaware, they're far progressed with their reef building programs as opposed to New York State where I live, you know. Um, the north side of the sound is nothing but rock. So it's natural habitat for blackfish. But the ocean could use a little bit of help as far as reef bottom goes. And um, it's the type of wrecks that they have down there that I believe very firmly help produce these fish. So not only uh, does Captain Kane uh, receive and deserve my undying thanks for this event, but um, Captain Monty Hawkins of the Morning Star has been a tireless champion of reef building in the state of Maryland. And um, when you go on his party boat, not only does he take a collection for the pool fish, but he also takes a collection for reef building, you know, from each customer. And that money goes into building reefs, it really does, you know. He deploys oyster castles on almost every one of his trip, and he picks the GPS locations where they're gonna sink every wreck and every piece of structure that the state procures to become part of their reef system. You know, they have subway cars, they have New York City subway cars down there. There are boats, there are tugboats, there are barges, there are army tanks. Um, endless told pieces of structure that I can't even comment on, not to mention, you know, uh, demolished highway bridges and concrete rubble piles and, you know, stuff that we have similar in New Jersey and New York. Um, but we have a lot more broken bottom as, a pe uh, as opposed to how many actual wrecks that they have down there. And in my mind, it's the ultimate habitat to grow these enormous blackfish and many other species. I mean, anything that you put on the ocean bottom is going to be reclaimed by the ocean in no time. You have all sorts of life growing on it. You have oysters, mussels, um, you know, crabs, shrimp, um, corals. Um, you know, I believe it's stated in marine biology manuals that um, there are no corals north of the state of Florida, which is entirely untrue. My friend Richie hooked two pieces of the wreck that my blackfish came from. He actually brought them up on his rig, about four or five inch in diameter pieces of rusted steel, which there's actually hard corals, they're dead, but hard corals and soft coral called sea whip, bright orange, not dead, growing coral on these pieces of rusted metal, which coincidentally are gonna become background as part of my trophy mount for the blackfish. Mm -hmm. So um, the fish's actual jaws and part of the wreck where the fish came from will be together for eternity, hopefully. That's a cool little sentimental uh, uh, configuration that I dreamed up. Um, I'm excited about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, there's so many people to thank surrounding this catch. Um, you know, my dear friend, Captain Ed Parker, for, uh, <clears throat> for many years of experience black fishing in the ocean off the coast of New Jersey and New York. Um, without all that time spent on the water, I never could have done this. Without having caught all those fish, I never would have been ready for this one. Um, 
you know, everything from knowing how to feed that fish to bait, dropping your tip, giving them the slack, how to hang them, how to hold them high, how to not let them down in the piece. It's years of repetition, you know, and years of, I'll tell you what, more of these beast blackfish break us off in the wreck than anybody ever bests, you know. Um, for example, I counted how many breakoffs there were on, on the following day's trip, on Saturday's trip. Uh, as a collective, we broke off 14 fish. Any one of those breakoffs could have been bigger than this fish right here, you know. Um, there's a lot of quality bruiser fish down there in those wrecks. So anyway, back to my thank yous, uh, you know, um, all the guys that I've ever, ever fished with that, that showed me anything, obviously. Um, but Captain Ed in particular, there's one old friend of mine, an old fishing buddy that I, I did many trips with, uh, Brian Gillespie. I owe a lot to that guy. Um, we fished together for years and um, he taught me all the basics and probably a little bit more. And uh, definitely he gave me a, a, a huge chunk of experience getting started. Even catching blackfish on my own boat, you know, uh, he was there for many of those trips and, you know, clued me in on some things. So, um, you know, all that experience that I owe to all my friends, um, all of the equipment, obviously, that held up in the fight, Captain Kane, who put me on that piece. Um, Monty for building, helping build all those reefs and, and being such a, a force in, in, in that part of uh, Maryland DNR. Um, he's a, a tireless champion of that fishery and he knows where his bread is buttered. You know, he's created something great and I know he loves passionately what he does, you know, taking people fishing for these kind of fish. It's a, it's a cool, really cool lifestyle, if you ask me. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, there's so much that goes into this. You know, the, the guy who got the bait, Joey Mako. <laughs> Best white crabs on the East Coast. I think almost all the big uh, uh, record fish were caught on his crabs, uh, at least that's what he told us, so I, I believe it, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy to come by these crabs, you know. Uh, not everybody has them, they're not always readily available, so uh, I thank Joey for having them in stock and uh, being able to sell me a couple of bags. Much appreciated, Joe. <laughs> um, and, uh, gee, and oh, well, let me not leave out Two of the most, uh, <clears throat> whoa, <laughs> two of the most important people in this story that uh, I almost forgot to mention. Um, well, there's my wife, you know. Uh, she puts up with a lot. Uh, she lets me go fishing, you know, even in my, even in my current physical state. So, uh, you know, she lets me chase my dream and she lets me spend a few bucks going on down to Maryland uh, every year. And I deeply appreciate that, you know. Uh, she, she understands me and she's, uh, she's been instrumental in helping me follow my dream. And, uh, whew, there's one guy in particular who is, uh, the most instrumental man in my life. Oh, <laughs> it's a happy moment. It's a happy moment. Uh, you know, my dad, <laughs> uh, Bill Westerfeld, uh, he raised me as an outdoorsman. Uh, you know, a lot of people are into sports and that's great. You know, I, I don't knock that. I promote it, I embrace it. Um, sports is a fantastic thing for kids. Discipline, good health, physicality. It develops your mind. 
Um, but my dad, he's a, he's an outdoorsman, you know, that's what he had in his soul. Uh, he fished for carp as a young kid. That was his b great passion. And um, he took me fishing, you know. Uh, from, from my first fishing trip at age four, I was hooked. You know, I, if you ask my dad, he'll always tell you, you know, one more cast, one more cast, you know. Uh, I know that fish is going to come, Dad. I know that fish is going to come. One more, you know, just let's stay a little longer. And uh, he's retold that story many times, and it didn't happen once, you know. It happened every time we went. So, uh, you know, he took me uh, in the freshwater, carp, sunnies, um, trout. So uh, my dad, you know, uh, he, he belonged to the Sportsman of the Empire State Hunting and Fishing Club. Um, I grew up with a gun in my hand, you know. My dad taught me to shoot from the time I was very small, taught me gun safety. Um, I'm one of those kids that actually had that Daisy Red Rider BB gun, you know. And um, of course I used it supervised as a little guy, but uh, you know, I grew up and um, as I grew, uh, my outdoor experiences grew uh, just for having a father like the one I have. Um, we went on the sailboat, we trolled lead core line and big, uh, big old rubber tube eels for bluefish and you know, did a little bit of winter flounder pounding and stuff like that. and. Uh, you know, he's not nearly the fisherman that I have grown to be, but uh, w he definitely gave me my start, and without him, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now, you know. Um, not to mention that he has uh, done everything for me that a good father could possibly do for their son in life over the many years. So uh, I, give, I give all the credit to my dad, you know, for getting me started. This concludes part three of the three-part series. To receive the latest fishing reports, subscribe to the Fisherman's YouTube page. Click subscribe, then click the settings button and check send me updates. You'll now receive notifications of the latest Fisherman YouTube videos and reports. If you're already a subscriber, make sure you've checked send me updates in the settings so you receive the latest notifications.